Welcome to this second video about uh, solving nonlinear equations using bracketing methods. In this video, we will be talking about the bisection method. As we mentioned before, the bisection method may be a very powerful method because of its extreme simplicity. Knowing the bracket, the bracket that we defined last time, between which the function changes its uh, sign, uh, and we are now sure that we have a root lying between the values x1 and x2, we just simply divide that interval into 2. So uh, by dividing this into 2, we find a point midway between x1 and x2, and this is supposed to be our best guess about the solution of this uh, equation, or uh, for the root of f of x. So, simply x3 is the average of the two values. So now, uh, let's uh, write it uh, a little bit uh, more formally. If uh, the root lies between x1 and x2, then our best guess would be x3, where x3 is x1 plus x2 over 2. Uh, then, we find the value of uh, f of x, uh, f of x3, uh, which uh, gives us whether the function here is positive or negative, or what we care for actually, or mostly care for uh, the sign of the function. If it is a positive uh, value, like what we have here in the sketch, then the interval becomes x1 to x3. So x3 here becomes the new x2. However, if it's a negative number, if it's f of if f of x is negative, then uh, the new interval will be x3 to x2, or in other words, x1 is the new uh, sorry x3 is the new x1. Uh, mathematically stating this, we say that if if f of x times uh, f of x3 times f of x1 is less than zero, then let x1 uh, become uh, the x1 new become the x1. The original one and x2 new is the x3 while uh, if that's not true then just switch it if, if let x1 uh, uh, the new x1 become the x3 and the new x2 stays as is then we uh, uh, look for what we call a termination criteria this probably is a new term we are using here uh, this indicates that if we uh, uh, continue searching for x3, probably we will go forever. Because most of the numerical methods will not find a, a value of x for which f of x is equal to 0. It will just find a value of x for which f of x is extremely small. What we are looking for here is somehow to stop the loop, to stop the search. That's what we call a termination criteria. The simplest possible termination criteria would be if the relative error is less than a very small prescribed value. This prescribed value would be equal, uh, sorry, this relative error would be the change in x3 over the new x3. Here we, we suppose that the new x3 is a better approximation. So this is the more accurate value. And now we are uh, seeing whether the change that happened in uh, finding a new solution is very small. If it's very, uh, the word very small is actually uh, a very non-scientific word. But this is what we look for. Uh, for example, we may set epsilon uh, as uh, 1 over 1,000 or 1 over 1 million. Uh, or whatever, depending on uh, the, the required accuracy of the solution. Sometimes x3 is a zero. This is a very, very, very rare uh, occurrence, but if it happens, then we cannot really do that. That's why uh, the relative error becomes the length of the interval, the, the distance between x2 and x1. If it's very small, then we are closing up on the solution. That cre uh, then this becomes our uh, re uh, relative uh, error. 
uh, again, uh, the termination criteria has to be in the loop. So we are trying to create a way to avoid dividing by zero. If for any reason x3 becomes a zero, then we switch to another criteria, uh, criterion, which is that the, uh, the bracket is extremely uh, small. Uh, now uh, we uh, introduced the bisection method in uh, mathematical terms. Let's try to introduce it in uh, a more programming uh, term by uh, talking about the algorithm of finding the roots using the bisection method. So see you next video.